what is zero knowledge? Zero knowledge is the ability to prove you know something without divulging more than you need to, to divulge. An example that everybody's maybe familiar with is for private transactions on a blockchain so that you can prove that a transaction, you know, a transfer of value is, is valid without having to say who sent it or maybe even what the amount is. Um, but you actually prove that you now have a hundred of some token without showing, you know, who sent it to you or how many transactions it was sent in. So it could have been 10 people that sent it to you or one, like all of that's kind of private and that can be done on chain through zero knowledge proof. That way the transactions are private, but you still have the decentralized permissionless network kind of holding your balance of that asset. So zero knowledge is kind of like a black box that many people wouldn't understand. It's really complex math and some crazy kind of concepts behind it. Um, it's been around for many years. I mean, it was, I think, on a chalkboard in the 70s, the concepts of zero knowledge proofs, and then they were put into software and, and now software has been improved and computer hardware has been improved enough that you can efficiently like do zero knowledge stuff on kind of our laptops and people that want to use it kind of have access to the software without needing to be PhDs in math to actually build a, a zero knowledge program. You can do it much easier now. So the technology is really catching up and allowing zero knowledge to be used in more and more places. Um, so another really great example of zero knowledge besides just private transactions is maybe like an ID example. So there's there's a whole really exciting realm of zero knowledge like ZK AI or ZK ML. So if you think about it, and Alberto actually did this before he got into blockchain, he was doing uh, like AI KYC. So when you think about KYC, not just for crypto exchanges, but you know, KYC is a thing that happens with your banks. You have to prove your identity, right? And for us that have done it before in crypto, you know, you hold up your ID and you hold up your face, right? And it and it looks and it sees um, that you are over 18 and you live, you know, in the United States, right? That's maybe a, a criteria. Mm -hmm. But what else did they get? Well, they recorded your entire ID and your face. Now, where's that data, right? What happens if the people that just did that KYC get hacked, right? Now your address, your age, date of birth, face, height, weight, eye color, hair color, all that stuff's boom on the dark net, right? People are buying it, pretending to be you. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Um, so with, 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 if you think about it, right? I mean, that's a, yeah. truth. that's, that's a thing. That's but, super scary. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that because you do it all the time. The, the AI programs now kind of do that. So it's AI, but it's still AI running on another computer. So what zero knowledge can do is it can run that AI program on your computer and create this proof. And the only thing that ever leaves your computer is this zero knowledge proof that basically proves you're over 18 and you live in the United States. You didn't have to share your ID, your picture of your face and all that stuff to, to prove it to like the bank or to the, whatever it is that you're doing it for, the exchange, whatever the use case is. So if you think about that as an example, it's like being able to prove something without having to divulge everything, just proving a very explicit fact about something can be done without releasing all of the private stuff that normally in the past has gone with it. And the, the other really interesting use case is the, the layer twos. So for layer twos, just like you don't want to show your ID, that's like private data. But the you can also use the same technology to just not have all of the data be required. So for like a layer two, all the transactions that happen on the layer two they are public transactions. Maybe you're not trying to hide anything that goes on in the layer two. There's nothing private about them, but you don't want to have to take every transaction and put it on the layer one so the layer one can make sure that they're valid. So using zero knowledge, the private data is not actually like sensitive data. It's just a lot of data that you don't want to like cram into the layer one, right? So you can use it for scaling because now you take all those transactions on the layer one and you prove that they're all valid and the only thing that you really need to prove, sorry, the layer two, you take all the transactions on the layer two and you prove that they're valid using zero knowledge. And then the only thing you have to publish to the layer one is the proof that these 
thousand transactions were valid and the result, like the end result of of them. Um, so without going into too much detail, you can kind of imagine that concept that like zero knowledge proof allows you to prove something without giving out all the information. A lot of times that information is private sensitive data, but for like layer two and scaling blockchain type use cases, the data isn't necessarily sensitive private data. It's just a lot of data that you don't want to like burden the, the main chain, the layer one with. Um, so that's kind of where the scaling and ZK EVMs and layer two scaling through zero knowledge uh, comes in because it's also trustless. So you're not you're not relying on an Oracle. You're not relying on, uh, you know, some group of people to do the right thing. You're relying on this zero knowledge mathematical software that's, you know, proving something with certainty. It's trustless. You just are trusting this math algorithm, you know, zero knowledge technology as opposed to trusting, you know, five of seven people to do the right thing and not, you know, get arrested or lose their keys or something like that. So um, so zero knowledge is, is a really compelling technology for blockchain scaling, blockchain privacy, and general, you know, technical privacy. It's got applications, you know, outside of blockchain too. So um, the white paper that we put out that's that's super, super interesting. Check out the video and, you know, the content we have about that is a scaling solution for zero knowledge proofs. So um, in terms of blockchain concepts, if you get a proof on a blockchain to verify that it's a valid proof, it takes a fair amount of time. Like a transaction that has a zero knowledge proof in it can take, you know, use a lot of gas, you know, and cost a lot of gas fees. And you can only do so many proof verifications, you know, per second, if you if you think about it that way. So the use cases that I described here and the potential to actually adopt this technology is kind of limited from a blockchain perspective um, and maybe even traditional technical world perspective by how many proofs you can actually verify at once. Um, so what Alberto's paper does is it describes a decentralized network of proof aggregation. So if you can prove that something with zero knowledge is true, what you can actually do is you can have a zero knowledge program that verifies two proofs and it combines them into one proof. And you can do this aggregation that basically takes a thousand proofs and proves those proofs in other zero knowledge proofs like, you know, Inception, like turtles all the way down. And what you end up with is one proof that represents a thousand proofs. And on chain, on the blockchain, you just have to verify the one proof. So it, it basically allows that use case of, of ID verification. You know, maybe every transaction on the blockchain needs to include a, an ID proof that just proves you're 18 or proves you're a member of some, whatever it is, right? Whatever the proof does. But now you can think, okay, well, these proofs now can actually be used at scale because we have a system that off-chain will aggregate them all. And then on-chain, all you end up with is just a single proof that the chain can actually process efficiently. You need this type of technology to really get that mass adoption. Yeah, to be able to use a, a ledger, but that everyone, if you want to privatize some of that information on the ledger, that, but also, so in a way though, it could essentially privatize data in like a selective way that you can like make certain parts of the data private and people can't see, but you're releasing just other parts of the data, only specific things that prove whatever information you're trying to give, but you don't have to just give out like all the data basically. Is that kind of? Yeah, and, and it's not necessarily, I mean, everybody's gonna go, you know, not everybody. I think people in the blockchain and crypto industry are not going like, oh, it's how you do money laundering. Oh, that's how, you know, criminals can, you know, do whatever crimes they're doing and pay for them. You can also do it in a way that's actually compliant, right? You can, there are ways that you can do it so that the public ledger doesn't reveal, you know, all your payroll, right? So your employees aren't having to know each other's paychecks by just looking at, you know, all the transfers that happened at the beginning of the month from the company's treasury or whatever. Um, so you can solve those things, but you can also do it in a way so that should, you know, a government entity need to, they could come to you and you could say, well, yeah, here's the proof, right? It's not on chain, but if you really want to know that I'm doing things properly, you know, I can share it with you and prove that this is me and I sent it to them or whatever the case might be. So there's ways to actually increase, you know, regulatory compliance without 
sacrificing the the privacy that you know we all have when we go to the ATM and deal with our you know banks 